I find that these patients with high grade um, proximal lesions are, are struggling. Um, it's, a, it's a horrible place to have a, a stricture and a stenosis. They're bringing liquids up um, constantly, um, high dysphagia scores, and all they want to do is have something to drink and eat. Uh, that's all they want to do, because the only other option really for these patients is a gastrostomy. Uh, so they, these patients are desperate not only to reduce secretions, but to maintain oral intake as well. When it comes to treating these patients, I think there's, a, there's an element of clinician apprehension um, in treating them just for fears of the risk of placing a stent too high um, and inducing uh, globus sensation or throat discomforts. So I, I was first introduced to the proximal um, deployment Taewung um, cervical esophageal stent two or three years ago now. Um, and what was most impressed about was the short proximal flare that it has. Um, so that is, instead of being two centimetres, it's a centimetre. So that gives you a much shorter proximal landing zone than the standard esophageal stent. Um, the stent also deploys from top to bottom. Um, so this means that you've got a much more accurate um, method for deployment. So you, you can flare the top of the stent, push the stent onto the lesion, and then flare the rest of the stent. So giving you an accurate, uh, highly accurate deployment mechanism. Um, it's also a single covered stent, so if, say for example, you did deploy it too high and you were concerned that it was too high or the patient had some globus sensation, it is retrievable and it is removable. So I've done eight cases um, so far um, using the technique I've described, of which no, no patients have had any reports of globus sensation, throat discomfort, perforation or bleeding, all of which have had improvements in their dysphagia scores. The first thing I will do actually is do a high quality barium swallow. It gives you a characteristic bubble, um, that appearance with the top of the bubble being formed by cricopharyngeus and then obviously the stricture below it forming, uh, in between the, the stricture and the cricopharyngeus forming this characteristic bubble. This can then give you the delineation of your landing zones and whether you've got enough room to play with um, to land the stent itself. The next important step is the, the pre-dilatation. The difference with the proximal deployment of esophageal stent is that you are pushing the, um, the delivery system and the plastic covering off the top of the stent. So instead of retrieving just the olive, you're retrieving the plastic covering as well. Um, and I learned that from my first case, which is a very, very high grade stricture. In fact, it was a completely, the, the esophagus was completely occluded. I didn't pre-dilate and I really struggled um, to say the least. So it's only a gentle 12 millimetre balloon dilatation. But ever since I've started using um, this, this method, I haven't had any problems um, with retrieval of the delivery system. I haven't had any bleeding complications or any um, complications with perforation at all. It just means that you, you can deploy the stent and then retrieve the delivery system without any issues. So here I've done the pre-planning swallow and as you can see again the characteristic bubble with the top of the bubble formed by cricopharyngeus and the bottom of the bubble formed by the top of the stricture again with over a centimetre of landing zone knowing I have enough room to play with to land the proximal flare of the stent. Here again I've managed to manipulate a catheter and a guide wire through the stricture and using a sheath I've injected small amounts of contrast to delineate my proximal landing zone as well as the stricture. That next image shows my 12mm balloon and here it's a, quite a tight lesion with a tight waist and this next image shows the waist eliminated um, by the balloon. This was the completion image taken following deployment. Then you do a water soluble contrast swallow and honestly, it's one of the most life-changing um, moments for the, for the patient. These patients have struggled to eat and drink um, for a number of weeks, if not sometimes, in my first case, months. And that feeling of when they drink a, a drink and it passes through the stent and into the stomach is a revelation for them. And it's massively satisfying as a clinician to see um, the patients improve following placing the stents.